Um, but again, guys, what you missed last time, uh, and it was just a really step-by-step -step formula, step-by-step -step algorithm that we basically did to find the inverse. And basically, if you guys remember, the first step was to always go ahead and replace f of x with y. That was step number one. So as I'm looking at everybody's homework today, I would expect to look at everybody completed 6-7, and everybody at least did step number one, because all you're doing is replacing f of x with y. Then step number two was all you had to do was now swap the x and the y variable. So again, I'll walk around, I'll go and take a look, and I would expect to be able to look at everybody's homework and say, oh, wow, yes, they replaced f of x with y and then swapped the x and the y variable, because that really doesn't take too much mathematical thinking. It's just applying a little process, right? So therefore, step three, though, is where it starts getting a little bit more difficult. Step three was when you had to solve for y. Now, this shouldn't be something, this isn't anything that is new to you guys. You guys should be familiar um, with solving for y here. We just have a little fraction, but there's nothing wrong with that. When we're solving, remember we got to use inverse operations. We always have to apply the reverse order of operations. So you see your y, you're solving for y now. You want to undo multiplication by negative 2 fifths, and you want to undo adding by 2. By using the reverse order of operations, we need to subtract the 2 first on both sides. So I have x minus 2 equals negative 2 fifths y. Now, to undo multiplying by negative 2 fifths, I can multiply by the reciprocal. Now, please remember when you're multiplying by the reciprocal, when you're multiplying an expression that's separated by addition or subtraction, you've got to put that expression in parentheses because you're multiplying both terms by that. Okay. I just changed it up a little bit. I just swapped the 1 in for a 2. Okay, So now, this multiplies to give you 1. When I apply the distributive property, I'm left with a negative 5 over x over 2 minus, uh, what you could do is a, this would be a 10 over 2. Or you could just simply divide out the 2's and you get a 5. And that equals y. Then step 4 is to replace y with f inverse of x. And then I'll simplify this answer, which is a negative 5 halves x minus 5. Tis plus 5. Thank you very much. OK. So your guys' answer would have been a negative, negative 5x plus 10, right? The problem that I said I was doing at the beginning of class? 24, yes.